Hello and happy Friday. Welcome to the after party for Shut I Wish Someone Told Me. This is the recap where we talk about the poll results and answer your questions based on this week's episode of Shit I Wish Someone Told Me and what we are going to be doing here and now. What we spoke about this week, what we're speaking about this whole ass month is self-discovery and why that's important, what that looks like, how to do it, all that stuff. And so last week we spoke about you know, kind of like the foundation, like this is what it is. This is, you know, the basics, if you will, uh, kind of like a self-discovery, like 101. And so this week, relationship coach Rachel Lanning and I had a conversation where we talked about discovering a healthy relationship with yourself. And so we really dove into talking about what that means, what that looks like, how to do it, and... um why it's so important. And so we gave you some tangible takeaways that you can use and you can apply. And so uh, if you have not listened to that episode, I highly recommend that you do. It is available on YouTube and anywhere that you would love to get your podcast fix. And so you can just head on over to any platform. There are also uh, links in my bio. If you want to find it that way, then uh, you can do that too. So um, as soon as she hops on, which there she is. So we're going to drum roll. But there you are. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I have a, a little bit of a allergy attack right now. So I apologize if I sound stuffy, but I'll try to maintain that as best as I can. You are a-okay. No one will be mad at you for that. And I love like the palm in the background. Like that's good positioning. Thank there. you. It's good yeah. vibes. Good yeah, vibes. good vibes. Exactly. <laughs> and we're both in glasses. Wow, we did not even plan that. Yeah, no, not at all. We did so well. Okay, so <laughs> I recap kind of what we spoke about in our episode. But I want you to have the opportunity to do the same. So uh, would you give everyone an overview of, um, like I mentioned, I recapped it. So what your key takeaways were and like any realizations that you might have had anything that you think was like, you know, if you take one thing from this, then yeah. this is what it is. Like, what are your thoughts in those terms about what we covered on this week's episode? Yeah, we talked about a lot of things, um, mm-hmm. all things, the relationship that you have with yourself, what it means. Um, and I think the biggest takeaway for me from all of this was really just getting to a place of self-acceptance, right? Like going in deep, looking at the things about ourselves that maybe aren't so wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at uh, all of the parts of ourselves and learning how to embody it right yeah. like I think so many people have this idea of like we should only be the good qualities the qualities we consider good we should only feel the good feelings and it's bad to be anything other than that but it's really not we actually need both um like however you want to term it the light and the dark um mm-hmm. the good and the bad we need all of that because it's a part of who we are yeah um and we talked about reaching this place of self-acceptance and really just learning how to embody all of those things yeah yeah I think that's a great I mean so one of the things that I talk about and thank you for sharing that is that yeah like you know people talk about like self-love and self-confidence and it's something where if you don't you know know who you are then you're not able to do that and if you don't first of all accept who you are and what you're gonna find when you start to figure out who it is that you are when you start to do that self-discovery if you aren't in a position where you are willing to like take off, you know, the judgment hat and just, you know, put on your researcher cap and go into like investigation mode, like, all right, whatever comes up, I'm going to feel what I need to feel, feel what comes up. Cause don't yeah. you know, not feel the feels, but like you said, like accept it, not. And so we had a whole last conversation about accepting your reality, but doesn't mean that you agree with the things that you discover and that that's, you know, something that you're, no one's saying that you have to love the fact that you're, let's say like late all the time. I use that a lot because I'm a constantly yeah. chronic, but it means that I have to accept that that is the reality. And right. It's about, it's about being honest with yourself. Yes. Right. Because we can't change right. anything about ourselves without being honest about it first. Right. Right. And saying like, Hey, like maybe this part of me is something that needs some work. And that's yeah. completely okay because that's part of the human experience, right? Is we're all on this journey of 
you know, being better and not always constantly getting to like a, a different, like a higher ground and always working on ourselves. But in the sense of like, that's just life, right? Like we're always reaching new levels, always having new experiences. There's always new layers that we're unraveling. So it's really just about, you know, getting honest with yourself, getting real with yourself about what is it that I want to improve or work on. Yeah. Yeah. Because we waste and we spoke about this, so I don't want to, yeah, it's like touch on it too, too much, but yeah, like exactly to your point, it's something where when we are in this position where we accept, accept ourselves, that frees up a lot of energy, right? Because if yep. you want to grow and evolve and, you know, like you said, become not necessarily like you always need to be working on yourself, but we are always learning more. Like I knew more about myself now than I did, you know, 10 minutes ago, if you want to think mm-hmm. of it in that way. Um, it's something where whenever you start to accept, you really open up the opportunity to be like, oh, okay, I'm, I see this thing now. I'm not pretending like it doesn't exist. I right. think that's important. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we talk about before we dive into like what everyone said in the polls this week was um, something that you mentioned, and I loved this, and it was that a lot of people think that they have a good relationship with themselves, but yeah. when you like dig a little bit deeper, it's like, I don't know. Like, so do you mind like talking about that for a little bit? And then um, we'll share what some people had to say to that question, because we asked, we asked you if you had a good relationship with yourself. So I'm excited to share whatever I had to say. Yeah, well, I think when we talked about this, we talked about the importance of actually like having someone to hold that mirror up for you. And Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, that doesn't necessarily mean like a therapist or a coach. It could be the people in your life now who almost like reflect to you something about yourself. And we could choose to either like, like we were just talking about either take that as feedback and something like hey I need to improve this or not um and um sorry I forgot where I was going with that um we can take the blacking out we can take the it's okay uh it's Friday like I'm just glad I know I'm completely blacking out my allergies are like clogging up my whole head right now so i just you completely saying, blacked out <laughs> whenever we so here we'll, we'll talk about together you're saying whenever we are in a position where um people oftentimes think that they have a good relationship with themselves but it's something where um holding up the mirror to others whenever we are in the position where yes. it doesn't necessarily always have to be a coach or a therapist all right go and and action <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean i think what well, i guess my point is that a lot of the time what we think we know of ourselves might actually just be like a coping mechanism might actually just be a defense strategy. Right. And those are the, like our brains are so good at convincing our, like convincing us that like, this is true. Like this Mm -hmm. is absolute. And I guess my point is more that sometimes when we take the feedback from other people, we can actually see like, Hey, there's something going on inside of me that maybe needs my attention. And I talk about this a lot in the world of relationships, right? What happens outside of us is typically a reflection of what's going on inside of us. Yeah. So where I work with these women who are choosing these emotionally unavailable guys and experiencing all these dating struggles, right? It's, it's not that there is something wrong with you, but, you know, most likely there's an issue with your self-worth. Most likely there's an issue with your boundaries. There's, there's something going on inside of you and with your relationship with yourself that is being reflected to you in, in your romantic relationships. Yeah. And I love this. I love that. And thank you for sharing in terms of relation, not just with others, but also with ourselves. And it might not be that like verbatim, like the same situation that's true for you and like that your belief is like happening, but your response to it might be similar. And so what you mentioned about choosing unavailable partners. And it reminded me of a conversation with another relationship coach, Fixture Picker, Adam Moroskis, where um, we did a great. episode. He is so great. Uh, yeah. 16, it was, you are not your trauma response. And so we talked about how exactly like what you said, these things that were like, well, this is just me are actually sometimes adapt- adaptations based on our environment and our circumstances. And those are the ways exactly. that we responded. And so for him, the example that he gave, and I'm doing this because he spoke about it. Um, and so I feel it's okay to share. Like it's, it's out there for yeah. you, you to listen right now. But he said that um, he is a workaholic. And a lot of people in our society are like, that's so great. You get so much work done. You're so productive. And he's like, well, yeah, because I had a really shit home life. And so I had to 
like bust my ass. And like, that's what, that's what he knew would like get him that result. And so it's something where when we look at it through that lens, like through that mirror, right through that realization, that acceptance of like, Oh, this is who I am. The awareness, that discovery, it's something where when you have that relationship with yourself and we speak about this in the episode, it's like calling yourself and being like, is that really me? Or is that an adaptation? Is that what I know to be normal? Is that something that I keep repeating just because, you know, people, you know, kind of like glorify it in his case, right? Like being a workaholic. Um, Same thing with people that have exercise or like, I mean, trigger warning, eating disorders, people oftentimes are like, you look so great. And it's like, okay, well, (laughs) that's There's this like, it's almost like this, like an Adam's example, like there's this trauma piece to it. Sure. But then there's also this piece of like social conditioning and like social expectations and what we've been programmed to believe is normal or good. And yes, it's a very real like phenomenon that we believe that like working hard and like overworking ourselves is productive. Burnout is productive when actually the truth is it's probably not Right. And it's more prob- it's more problematic yeah. than ever, especially yeah. in, in this country, especially in this day and age. Yeah. Um, and I think going back to what we're talking about here, part of like self-discovery is really like getting yourself to a place where you can break away from what society is telling you to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and break out of that box that society puts you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think and- that's where people find honestly the most happiness and, they find like real alignment with themselves, right? When we're not yeah. being who other people told us to be, yep. or we're not acting out of our um, like trauma adaptations. Yep, because they start, they, they learn the art of not giving a fuck, which a lot of people like, I mean, we can talk, that's a whole other conversation about the misconception of like how that means like, yeah. you know, disassociating, like that's not what that means. That means that like, it's very much a non-attachment situation, which we talk about, but um, yeah, so, Shall we dive into the poll results? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So the first question that we asked this week was, do you have a relationship with yourself? And that's why I wanted to set us up with what we just shared because it's like, yes, but also like, I don't know, like, do, do we know what that even really means? Like yeah. what a relationship with myself means to me might look like something different to someone else. And so 73% of people said yes. Uh, 0% said no. I want to put that out there. But twenty seven percent said, "What does that even mean?" Hmm. So I was like, "Okay, okay." So you're not just like jumping into it. Like there's there's some curiosity there. Is like what that says to me, and yeah. I think that that's a really healthy place to be in because I think that that you know tells me that like you're you're not just assuming the face value, right? Like kind of like this is who I am. This is the way that I am. This is you know, what society has like taught me to be, but you're not in the position where you're just like, I have no clue. I'm you know, hopeless. It's in a position of, yeah, like I feel that is a position of curiosity and that that's a really, really powerful place to be. Uh, What do you know what? I think most people assume automatically that they have a good relationship with themselves, especially if they're not necessarily in a place of like struggling or like, I think most people assume that they do. Right. Because, yeah, you've, you've known you the longest. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. again, going back to what we're saying, it's like you've, you've pretty much known what you've adapted to. And that's not necessarily, like, the healthiest. Yeah. It might be. But, yeah. It like, might be. But it may not be. But chances are. There's I've been there. Shit. Like, I've, yeah. I realized it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. that it's one of those things where, like, when you don't know any different, you're like, oh, well, this is just how it is kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that there's people who, like, don't really know what that means because I yeah. used to not really know what that meant at all. Yeah. Yeah. I was, like, and, like, a decent percentage, like, a little over a quarter, like 27%. So, yeah, I was like, okay, okay, y'all. Yeah. Uh, the next question we asked was, how would you rate your relationship with yourself? And so the answers were, um, like, it's trash, essentially. Uh, it sucks. One was like, but another answer was, it's so good. Like, I wouldn't change anything. It's amazing. Another answer was, man, it's okay. I've known me forever, like we were just talking about. 
And uh -huh. then the other answer was, it's awesome. I'm learning more every day. So what do you think the majority said? I've already told you these though. I don't want to say that a majority said that it's like trash. Um, I don't think that. I think most people said it's good. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Most people, yes. Yeah. Uh, over 50%, so 64% said it's awesome and I'm learning more every day. 35% said, yeah, it's okay. I've known me forever. 0% said it was like trash and 0% also said it couldn't be better. So both extremes, okay. people were like, nah. So everyone is like right in the middle. In the middle, yeah. Yeah, on that spectrum. Okay. That's and so, fair. yeah. And I, I mean, every, every week I'm just like, I'm so proud. I feel like a proud mama bear. <laughs> it's people that respond because I'm just like, I mean, yeah. that's great. Like, again, great. it's awesome. I'm learning more every day. I'm looking at the responses here. And so that tells me again, like curiosity, right? Like you're sure. aware, it's good. And at the same time, you know that there's more. And yeah. then, you know, the other 36%, meh, it's okay, I've known me forever. I think that that is a good place to be because you are aware, like, you're aware of the status, right? Like, you're like, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. Like, so I yeah. think that that, um, I think that both of those are, are good answers. What was your thought or what were your thoughts on these? I agree. I think those are good answers. I'm glad to see it was like in the middle versus yeah. the two extremes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that curiosity piece is, is a good sign. Yeah. I 100% uh, agree. Yeah. Uh, we also asked true or false. I enjoy spending time by myself. I was surprised at this. 100% said true. 100%. Which I was super I surprised. I resonate with, with that. I mean, I, I resonate with I that. I enjoy being by myself. So I... I feel that same, but I know so many extroverts that I was, I was expecting like someone <laughs> to be like, no, it's yeah. Um, but I mean, again, like I think that we're looking at the, the, the sample size, if you will. And so I think that a lot of people who responded are like the ones who are doing personal development work. Um, and so that even if they are an extrovert, they likely recognize the importance of that time that has been alone which we've done a whole episode on episode 50 of which is super good joe is here hello joe he said because you were awesome and providing great information in advance oh thank you um i assume that was in the response to yeah like these woke ass answers which yeah i think are so good so thank you thank you for that um so nice we had three questions where it was like we ask questions like what's some shit you wish someone told you about having a healthy relationship with yourself? What questions do you have about it and describe your relationship with yourself using just emojis. And so for that one, um, let's talk about the emoji first and then we'll answer some questions and share, share some shit that people wish someone told them about self-discovery. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay, That's cool. Right. So let's go with the quick emojis first. So describe okay. your relationship with yourself using just emojis. Some people, just put a singular emoji. So 50% of the people just put singular emojis. So we had, I'm going to enter them into the chat. We had the, the sunglasses emoji, which I think that one's like the cool emoji, right? It's like, yeah, like we're good, you know? Yeah. Chill. Um, yeah, exactly. We had the, this one, the, the heart emoji, the emoji with like the little heart, the little hearts around your face. Ah, uh, I like that one. Right. Which I was like, that reminds me of very much like, oh, like I love me, like self love like, Yeah, it feels warm. One. Yes, I really liked that one. Um, so, okay, no discrepancies from us there. What about, I'm excited to put this one in. So that's what the next person put in. What would you, oh. yeah. A roller coaster. A roller up coaster. Down. Yeah, up and down. I like that honesty. Yeah, yeah, I think ebbs and flows. It's, yeah, it's true for everyone, I think. It's all just R&D. And so, yep. yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, this one was the next one that it was a singular one. And then I'm going to have to, like, type them out, type them out. So the, that, that was the next one. What do, you, how, what do you think of when you see that one? It's the emoji where the person's, like, got, like, their, their hand, like, they're pulling or they're stroking mm -hmm. their chin. What do you think about your interpretation of that one? Sure, I would say maybe, like, maybe they're thinking about it. Maybe they're not sure. Mm -hmm. maybe they're yeah uncertain 
That's how I would take that one. What about you? I think for that one, it's like a, so in my head, that's the, whenever I say, hmm, like, that's the emoji that comes to mind. I'm just kind of like, I mean, how would I explain that? Like, I don't know. It or- like you said, yeah, like uncertain, like, yeah, like questioning, like trying to figure it out. Um, yeah. Kind of a thing. I'm looking for one. Well, I'm looking for the one with like the little glasses. Okay, hold on. So that was, those four were the singular emojis. And then we had four that were multiple emojis. And so the first multiple emoji was the stroking the chin one again. Okay. It was the, um, the straight face with like the straight eyes one. Okay. It, it was the one with like the monocle, like where it's like looking like, that one to me says like suspicious, like the monocle yeah. one. Yeah. Um, let me I see agree. if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. And then it was face palm. It was a face palm. Okay. And then it was uh, the shrug one. Okay. So Sounds what? Sounds like there's some, uh, yeah, uncertainty there. Or like maybe it's not, not going so well. I don't. I don't know how to interpret that. That one. So, yeah, I kind of took that one as, right? Like, yeah, that's why I'm like, let me enter them in so we can, like, see them all. So. Yeah. um, And I'll put them in the comments Doesn't seem so sure, to be honest with you. Right? Yeah, it's it's kind of like, (laughs) I feel like that was one of the ones that's like, they were the 27%, what does that even mean? And the 36%, like, "Eh, it's okay. (laughs) Yeah. I feel uh... like that's this one. Um, for sure because yeah like same I feel like that's kind of uncertain uh but also like you're not mad about it you're just like yeah like it is what it is <coughs> excuse me bless you allergies bless you um yeah they're not they're not too sure yeah that's so that. That, okay cool me too so we're on the we're on the same page so far uh, about these so the next one I type in a little bit faster so it's the double heart a runner a guitar and a muscle face. Um, that to me says hashtag self care in emojis. Yeah, I think they seem pretty confident in their relationship with themselves. Yeah. Those feel like good emojis to me. Yeah, those are. I agree. Feel good emojis. All right, yes. here is the next one. I'm about to enter this one in. Let okay. Me... And for anyone who is like, what are y'all doing? I will put these also in the um, in the description so that y'all who are watching the replay can see those here too. I'm trying to get the, what is like the, what do you call like the hang 10 sign? Is it called hang 10? Oh, like this one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to search. Cannot remember. I don't remember what it's called. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. There we go. Yeah, hang ten. That's what it's. That's what's coming up. So, okay. so the sticky tongue out emoji, the sunshine, and the hang ten emoji. I don't know what that means. I think that. <laughs> I mean, I think this is a good a good sign. Um, like yeah, like a yeah, like. Seems like of. silly. Like yeah, I feel good about those. Okay, cool. The next <laughs> one, is kind of a long one, so I'm just gonna say them out loud, and then. I will enter them in while you're answering the first question. So the next one is eye roll emoji, uh, high five emoji, the shocked face emoji, the sad emoji, the LOL emoji, the hmm emoji again, two hearts. And then like the, the little, the little smiley face looks like it's copping a feel. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. He's just (laughs) kind of like happy, excited. Yeah. yeah 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 it's 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 this face but like it's got hands yeah it looks like it's up to something is what that yeah. emoji says to me okay hugs maybe welcome like, welcome so yeah like, so what what down, is all maybe. that yeah what does all that say to you just uh like highs and lows ebb and flow sometimes it's good sometimes it's maybe not yeah that to me that's how so, i take that multifaceted is what I got out of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a lot layered. There's layered. That's a good way to say it. 
Yeah. Like, and again, like kudos to the self-awareness because, um, yeah, that was, that was thorough and the vulnerability there. It's like, oh my God, like I've got me though. High five. Also, I roll sometimes like, I, you know, I do the thing, um, or a shock, shocked face, sad face. Sometimes it sucks, but ha ha. Uh, and then I wonder about my decisions, but I love myself. And at the end of the day, yay. That's, <laughs> that's how Seems I take like a fair interpretation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that's how I take that. So that was cool. So thank you for everyone who responded to those. Um, first question that we have, let's go ahead and dive into those, is how is it different? So we have, the question specifically is, what questions do you have about having a healthy relationship with yourself? And, oh, um, Coach Iron ISSA, we are talking about uh, discovering a healthy relationship with yourself. So the, what we were just talking about there is we asked people to describe their relationship using only emojis. And <laughs> so we were like, what does this mean? Um, but now we're going to be diving into questions. So yeah, thank you for asking. I know I apologize that I didn't actually put that in the title today. So uh, question number one is how is it different than being self-centered? So I'm assuming what I took from that is how is having a healthy relationship or how is having a relationship with yourself different from being self-centered? So I guess the way I would respond to that is that I actually think we need to take this idea of being like selfish and self-centered and like instead of thinking of it as being a bad thing, um, which it of course can be, but like it's not, it's not a bad thing to be like self-focused. Um, obviously we can like lean too much on one end of the spectrum with that. Um, but I think I don't see anything self-centered about understanding yourself, getting to know yourself, um, you know, building a better relationship with yourself. Right. Um, cause I think that really sets the tone for everything else in your life. So I think it's actually, um, a good thing to be somewhat self-centered. Uh, that would be my response to that. Yeah, we had, we did a conversation, Josh, Brittnell and I, about um, how like self-care isn't selfish. And so I actually, for the purposes of this specific question, looked up the definition of self-centered because I'm like, I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So mm -hmm. according to the Google, which is where we get all of our info now, uh, self-centered is being preoccupied with oneself and one's affairs. And so I think that, like you said, it's something where we've gotten, it's gotten a bad rap. Like advocating for yourself and your own needs has kind of gotten a bad rap. And so sure. it's different when you do that and when you assert boundaries and when you know what you need to do and when you are taking it to, like this is on a spectrum, right? So whenever you take it to the other extreme and you're just like, well, fuck everyone. And so that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier whenever I said people have, a misconception of what it means to, you know, give zero fucks. And I think that this is, sure. we can apply like the same concept here. It's something where it's different to just not care about people and um, right. than it is to like also care about yourself, right? Like just because you care about yourself does not mean that you can't care about yourself or care about sure. others as well. And so I think that that um, is how I would best explain the difference there. Yeah, and I think this is especially important for people who maybe need to improve on their boundaries or maybe you lean towards being a people pleaser, right? It can feel very selfish to um, like set boundaries and to say no to people and to put yourself first. It can feel in your body like very uncomfortable and it can feel like you are, I always tell people like, I, I know firsthand it feels like you're kind of being like a bitch or an asshole, but you're actually not. It's just that you are not you don't feel safe yet with that level of, of assertiveness. So right. it can feel like you are being selfish or self-centered. And the truth is that we really need to rethink the way that we like see selfishness or that we, um, like I said, like the way that we see being selfish is like this bad thing. It's, it's really not, it's a spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. And we have a comment. So big head Rico and Nino, I think I pronounced all that right. Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. I like to say it out loud to make sure if I choose their feelings of my own, what is the end result that I want? Ooh. I like that one. That's a great tip coming from the comments. Thank you. Yeah, that is good. If I because, choose their feelings of my own, what's yeah, the end result? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
Yeah, I think that, that that's an excellent way because oftentimes Dwayne is fine. Okay, cool. Hi, Dwayne. Thank you for your spots. So I think that, yeah, oftentimes, like you said, people feel bad about it. And again, it's because, well, you're, anything that you've never done before is going to feel weird, right? Whether that's sure. running a mile or asserting your boundaries or advocating for your own needs. And so I think that, um, yeah, it's important to exactly like what Dwayne said, just say it aloud to yourself and, you know, to consider like, if this were my friend, like, how would I feel about that? Like, if like, be your own best friend in that way or be your own manager. Like, because sometimes, you know, sure. our best friends, like your, your manager is going to be like after your bottom line. And so, um, yeah, if this situation were with someone else, like, would I advocate for their needs kind of a thing? I think that's a great way sure. to like, look at it. So, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Good answers. Good answers and uh, practice to use. So the next question we got is uh, multi-part. So first of all, uh, what question do you have about having, relationship, having a relationship with yourself? How to trust and listen to myself more? I give others the benefit of the doubt, but how do I do that for me? How to pause? And so uh, do you want to take it? Do you, do you want to take it from the top or start with that? <sighs> Yeah, how to trust and listen to myself more. Um, this is actually like, this is a big thing for me on my healing journey, like listening to my intuition and learning how to like really trust that. And it can be hard, especially when we're, we throw trauma into the picture, right? Um, this idea of like self-trust. Um, but I think the more like healing work that you do and the more um, – validity you feel in yourself and the more work you the more inner work you do um that does get stronger with time mm -hmm. um you know i feel like we have to just like build on our self-worth like we have to get to a place where we feel deserving of like the things we want of the life we want and um almost going back to what we were saying before like we can step into that place of like advocating to us for ourselves um almost in a little bit of a selfish way um, and living a life that feels good to us. And a lot of the time that's going to be, you know, having boundaries, um, you know, standing up for yourself. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be making the hard decision, um, especially in the world of relationships, right? Like it's going to be trying to work against those patterns that we've pretty much played out our whole life. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know if you want to build on that a little. Yeah. I think that's all great advice and how to trust and listen to myself more. I think the insight that Dwayne shared about saying it aloud to yourself. And then, yeah, like what I was mentioning to piggyback off of that about, you know, thinking if the situation were happening to my best friend, like what advice would I give them in this situation? Um, and so that I think is, yeah, or I think those are some ways you can start like listening to yourself and, um, in order to build that trust, like it's going to take time. I think a lot of people, and you know, you had just touched on this as well. A lot of people, you know, whenever we make decisions that don't have a favorable outcome, it's something where we start to doubt our ability to make decisions. And so the quickest way to start to trust yourself is to do more of what you say you're going to. And so that means that if you were like going to wake sure. up at 6 a.m., then wake up at 6 a.m., Wake up at 5.55. Yeah, right. Don't, Keep little promises to yourself. Yeah. I love Don't, that one. Yeah. you know, wake up at 7. And also with that, if that's something that you're going to try, because I think that's an easy like buy-in, if you will, to start yeah. to, like you said, start making those little promises to yourself. Set yourself up for success, not failure. If you are someone who doesn't wake up until 8, then don't start with 6, right? Like if you're someone who doesn't wake up until 8, then set yourself up for sure. success and let's try 755 and people hear that and they're like oh that's like that's stupid like five minutes and i'm like it's so stupid that there's no way like there the the margin of you not doing that like the potential the possibility of you not waking up five minutes earlier is so slim that of course you're going to succeed and so that's what i mean by like yeah setting yourself up for success not failure and then doing the things that you say you're going to do if you mm -hmm. are another example and then this will be the last one for this if you were going to, you know, I, I'm going to leave work at 5 p.m. because um, I want to have dinner with my kids because that's important to me, right? Family time is a value. I don't have kids, but example, 
And so if then someone asks me, oh, can I finish this report for them? I mean, yeah, I could, but no, like advocate for your own needs. Like what would you tell your friend to do? Like keep that promise to yourself because you yeah, know sure. that this is important to you. Those are boundaries. Right. For yourself. And you don't have to flat out say no, especially if that's something that you're uncomfortable with. Like you don't want to make this a traumatic situation. You don't want to make advocating for your needs something that is uncomfortable. You want to make it the most comfortable so that you will be setting yourself up to trust yourself to do it again. And so it might not be saying no, it might be saying, I have plans tonight and that's really important to me. Would it be okay if I did this in the morning or, you know, I can get it to you by this date. Like, does that work kind of a thing? And so like easing right. into like that no in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dwayne said the way that I worked on this is listing all the ways that I've betrayed mm -hmm. myself. I chose to identify why I don't trust myself in the first place. That's a really good one. Yeah. I was going to say for me, like I think, journaling was a big part of this process and like yep. for me like the way to, that I could process like how I feel and what I think and like seeing it so mm -hmm. that was a big one for me too like writing down all of the things that I allowed in my life and like that I shouldn't have or that I you know didn't necessarily want or like just the ways that I let myself down and didn't have right. my own back um and then from there like figuring out like, okay, well, this is why I don't, you know, trust myself or give myself the benefit of the doubt. Right. Yeah. And, and to the root of it. Yeah, you can't. And this is part of why. So there are, so, there are many reasons why, like, self-help doesn't help. But in terms of what we're talking about for self-discovery, like, exactly like you said, you can't fix what you don't know is something that is not optimal. I don't want to call it a problem, but that's essentially what I'm saying. You can't fix something that you don't know is a problem and that you're not accepting is a problem. So part of self-discovery is doing the uncomfortable work of looking at like, all right, like how have I, how have I treated myself like shit? Like how have I betrayed myself? Yeah. Where am I not? And where's the, the smallest, you know, place that I can start to make that up to myself and start to rebuild that trust with myself. We think about yeah. doing this in terms of relationships with other people, but it's important to do this in terms of relationships with yourself as well. And yeah, identifying sure. what those places are where you don't trust yourself and when you don't listen to yourself, because maybe you don't listen to yourself when it comes to your family. Uh, maybe it's when it comes to work, like identifying these things so that you can know like where it is, because oftentimes it's something where we, it's not tangible. And so we just feel overwhelmed and we don't know what to do. And so this is where things like anxiety comes from and burnout and people pleasing and like a host of other things. And so, yeah, how to trust yourself and listen to yourself more. Start to identify where you're not. Um, try some of the other tips that we have suggested in terms of making those small, you know, promises, keeping those small promises with yourself. Um, I also just want to say one more thing about like yeah, yeah. I gave others the benefit of the doubt. Yep. How do I do that for me? Like, I just want to add like having self-doubt is normal like I don't know you know there's like confidence for sure but I don't know too many people who you know don't think things through or who just like automatically take the dive and like right. lean into all the hard things like there is it, it is normal to have self-doubt and it's a lot easier to you said this before like what would I say to a friend like it is for me anyway it has always been a lot easier to like be uh, like a cheerleader for other people and like give advice to other people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I would take that same advice for myself. So it is normal to have like some level of self doubt. Um, I think that's just part of being human. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just caution people to like not hold themselves to some insane standard of being like this super confident person who like never questions themselves and never, yeah. you know, never doubts their intuition that there's moments where I still doubt my intuition. And like, I'm always like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have listened to myself, but it happens. It's just, it's part of life. Yeah. I think that that's so important because it's this reframe of like what doubt is, right? The awareness of the uncertainty doesn't necessarily mean that you like doubt yourself. I right. think that and, and when we doubt actually serves a purpose, by the way, yeah. it's without that doubt, we'd probably do a lot of really unsafe things. So it actually like serves a purpose in like protecting us in a lot of ways. Yeah. 
yeah, the fear, like we, we did a, we talked about, yeah, how fear like served us in that way. And it's something where it's like, you know, are you afraid or are you just uncomfortable? And like, how can you recognize the difference? And so, yeah, yeah if we take that and apply that to here where we're in a position of it, looking at it from the lens of doubt, is it that you're uncertain and that's what's scaring you? Or is it that like, you don't believe in yourself? Like, is it that, you know, we don't have a lot of context with this, but is it that a situation happened and, you know, like you had mentioned, like you think you should have done something different. Like you're looking at it that way because um, I appreciate you mentioning that like, it's normal to have doubt. And I think that this goes back to what we mentioned in terms of like not caring what others think and like having that kind of a look doesn't mean that you, you don't care. It's right. just that you're at a place where you're not attached to letting the opinions of others and like the things that you have done define you. It goes into making you who you are, but it is not who you are in your entirety. And so when yeah. it comes to, yeah, like giving other people the benefit of the doubt, uh, I think get curious. Why don't you give yourself the benefit of the doubt? And yeah, yeah to your point about like normalizing. When it comes to how to pause, I mean, ask for a five. Like, so first of all, identify when do you need to pause? Is it in work conversations? Is it with your family, romantic partner, whatever? And then from there, start to think of how you would identify when you need that pause. Do you start to get tense? Do you start to get sweaty? Do you start to like, you know, does your mind start to race? Like what starts to happen? And then think yeah. of like, okay, can I, like, what would be best here? Would it be best for me to be like, hey, I need to you know, take five minutes. I need to go for a walk. Like, what is it that you need to do? And then what you do with that time, if you're talking about slowing down and taking a pause. Is it just taking some breaths before your response? Is it before you respond? Excuse me. Is it journaling? Like, what is what does that look like? So yeah. that was kind of a, a lot we threw with that question. Do you have anything to add to that part? Yeah, I think that pause is really something you have to like give intentionally give to yourself. Intentionally mm -hmm. create time for yourself, um, no matter what it is. Um, yeah. I think that's yeah, that's self care is yeah. really like carving out the time to um to pause and i guess i think of that as like not so much pausing before you respond to somebody i think just pausing in general for yourself to create that space for you mm -hmm. to like self-reflect mm -hmm. and to have a moment with yourself mm -hmm. outside of life mm -hmm. yeah that's important yeah and i love that perspective as well because yeah maybe maybe they meant like a pause like on a day or like at the end of the day to reflect yeah the beginning. I'm not sure how they meant it but yeah, yeah. and not just necessarily like in the moment so we gave we gave you multiple multiple angles for that one yeah. so I hope that was helpful um we have one more question and that is is it wrong to be happy slash content on your own no do you want to do you want to elaborate no. we're, we're both like no that is Actually, not I think that's very healthy yes be happy and content on your own yes Again, like not so much to the extremes of like I only want to be alone, right? Because we need connection, but right, it's actually incredibly healthy to be content on your own. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We're well, taking it back to that spectrum. It's not like if you're avoiding it because it makes you uncomfortable, then that's something to look at. But yeah, just being happy and enjoying your alone time. No, yeah, right. that's a very healthy place to be. And yeah. a lot of people aren't comfortable. Um, but yeah, I think that, yeah, it's a very healthy place to be. So, right. And happy means no. something different to all of us. So that's true. That's yeah. true. So, okay. So those are our questions. I hope that those were helpful. If anyone else has any questions about having a healthy relationship with yourself, definitely comment them in the comments and we will get to them. Um, let's share some shit that people wish someone told them about having a healthy relationship with themselves. And then we'll go into some questions and wrap it up. Does that sound good? Yep. Cool. Go for it. So some shit that people wish that someone told them about having a healthy relationship with themselves. First, that it is very essential, and they put essential in all caps, to put, and then again in all caps, me first. Hashtag amen. I said the hashtag amen part, but yes. So like that, that it is very essential to put me first. Yes. Love that. Just it's yes. True. Yes. Yep. Uh, the next person said, you need to get comfortable at being alone before you can truly enjoy others' company. What do you think about that one? Um, 
Yes. I think you need to get comfortable with, with yourself. You need to be able to fulfill yourself because nobody else will be able to fulfill you. Yeah. At the same Uh, time, I think that we often learn in relationships. We often learn more about ourselves. Yes. And so, yes, important. in relationships. Right. And so, yes, important to be alone and to be comfortable with that. Um, I do think that it helps enhance your relationship with others. But, I mean, I think it's like 50-50. I think you need, yes, to enjoy your own company and your, have a relationship with yourself. But also, like, there's that other piece, right? Like, you need a relationship with others. And that's important, yes. too. So, yeah. Um, good advice. Yeah, it is important. And I think that and this is something we touched on in the episode. Whenever you do accept those parts of yourself and get to discover more about who you are and create your relationship with yourself, it opens you up to have deeper connections with others because when you accept who you are, good, bad, everything in between, that also affords you the opportunity to recognize that and understand it and empathize when you see it in others. And so I think that that is key there. One of the last things people said is never accept things you don't like or won't for the sake of someone else. Drop the mic. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have to. agree as well. Um, We're all allowed to have our own non-negotiables. Yeah. Our own standards. Yeah. It's all, yeah. all good stuff. Compromise is one thing, but yeah, if you are bending over backwards. Like, Self-sacrificing. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. for the sake of someone else. Yeah, yeah, no. Sure. So, okay, cool. So, cool. So, thank you to everyone who responded to those. Also, if you are listening right now and you have some shit, or if you're watching the replay that you wish someone would have told you about having a healthy relationship with yourself, definitely let somebody know and comment it. Um, you can also comment on the poll results because that's where the rest of these are posted in my last post. If you want to check that out. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to get to know Rachel a little bit better. So I have five rapid-ish fire questions. They are about discovering you, self, self-discovery. And then we're going to wrap it up. So are you ready That's for good. your rapid, rapid-ish rapid fire? I am. Let's do okay. it. So number one, what is something that you discovered about yourself that surprised you? Um, I would say... That I was never as vulnerable as I believed that I was. Mm, And true story, I learned this just in therapy and in my own, you know, inner work and healing journey. Um, I definitely always believed that I was like this open book Mm. um, that I like let people in. And then I had like, I remember like, I went to this, my second therapist I ever went to in my life was like, you're like not an open book. She's like, your energy is very closed off. And I could tell. And I'm like, what are you talking about, lady? Like, I genuinely believed I was like this vulnerable, open human being. And I wasn't. Um, and yeah, I guess that really surprised me. To that learn is that. surprising. <laughs> yeah. That is surprising. And so I thank you for, because that's a testament to, as well, that's a testament to the importance of relationships and of like seeking professional guidance and support because like, yeah like yeah. she was able to just be like hey you know right like curiosity and because you were able to accept like hmm is this true and get curious about yourself and accept that hey like it might be you were able yeah. to learn that so look it at reminds that. me of that meme actually with the doorknob that's a cactus and it's like oh yeah yeah and <laughs> your therapist tells you to let people in and then you're like the door is not locked but it's like a cactus right. doorknob Right. No that's can funny actually get in. Yeah. That's a funny meme. That's what yeah. it reminds me of a lot. That, that is a funny meme. Yeah. That's yeah. me at Whole Foods. I'm like, please don't talk to me. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, come up. Yeah. On the inside, I'm like, I just want to get my kombucha and go drink it in the car and eat my $20 <laughs> salad from the hot bar. Oh, in yeah. My, <laughs> in my car. I feel that. Um, okay. So awesome answer. Uh, question number two. What has been your favorite thing that you've discovered about yourself? Um, I would say, like, how intuitive I am. Mm -hmm. I think we're all in, I think we all have strong intuition, but Mm -hmm. uh, going back to what we spoke about earlier, it's really about how much you trust yourself and how much you trust that voice, that higher self voice that comes through for all of us. Um, 
my favorite thing that I discovered has been like my intuition and how like anytime I follow it, it usually leads me down the right path. Anytime I don't follow it, I always have, I always have this like reflection of like, I should have like listened to myself and like my instinct on that one Mm -hmm. because I took the wrong path. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. That is a good one. Okay. So question number three, what has been your, uh, excuse me, what is one thing you learned later than you would have liked to? Um, boundaries. Mm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Like, I definitely used to be someone who would, like, be so scared to stand up for myself and say no to people. And I think I realized this when I moved away from home in New York and more to California with people that I didn't know, people that I wasn't super comfortable with and having to like meet new friends. I think that's where it was like reflected to me the most that like, I really don't have boundaries because it's one mm-hmm. thing to be around people you're comfortable with and you right. know your whole life. But then when you like start going out into the world, you know, like for me, there was a lot of situations where I like really wouldn't like the way that someone made me feel, Mm -hmm. but I just didn't, at the time, I just didn't have the ability yet to like know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I think that's, you know, I learned it when I needed to, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I definitely learned that a little later than I would have liked to. Mm -hmm. That's good. These are good answers. I mean, not that anyone would like give bad answers about this, but yeah, Uh, they're so interesting. So, okay. This one in one word or sound effect, Describe your self-discovery journey. Uh, um, I want to say like almost like the sound of waves like crashing mm-hmm. or like the ocean. Mm-hmm. That's what comes to mind for me. Mm-hmm. Simply just because it's been like like an ebb and a flow. And like right. there's times where it's like calm and it's cool, it's peaceful. And then there's times where you're like – drowning in waves and being like knocked in all different directions so like that's kind of what I think of when right. I think of that I love that that's I knew exactly whenever you said waves I'm like I know exactly so for me mine would be my sound effect would be oof <laughs> 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 that sound effect that um, says it all yeah yeah <laughs> if you hear uh coughing that is Mr. T um oh he's allergies too like me he yeah he has a little yeah, has a little situation, um, but he's okay. So, um, last question: uh, What has been the best part about discovering who you are? Um, the best part about discovering who I am, I think, has been no pressure. <laughs> I think it's been the self acceptance piece and like learning mm. to like genuinely learning to love myself because it's kind of like what we've been talking about this whole time it's like how many people say like yeah I love myself yeah I, like I I have a good relationship with myself but everything you're doing and and the way you're showing up and the relationships you're in like whatever it is are saying the complete opposite and um, I think through my healing journey especially with my relationships um, I realized that the choices that I was making And a lot of the patterns that were playing out were a reflection of how much I really wasn't loving myself. Um, So the best part of discovering who I am and building on that relationship with myself has been learning to genuinely love myself. And again, like looking at all of the challenging stuff about me um, and maybe all of the things that I didn't like about myself and Mm -hmm. learning to like really dissect that and be like, hey, like, you know what? there's actually nothing wrong with that, that part of you and those things that you think and those parts of you that you shoved away and didn't want to look at. They're all part of you and your story and who you are. And um, for me, it's just been like this journey of understanding that like I make sense and uh, yeah, that self-love has uh, definitely been a good one for me. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, that that's cool. It's cool to hear more about that and your self discovery journey. So thank you. Um, and with that being said, we're like right on schedule. So where can they find you? What do you have going on? 
Okay, you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok, Rachel Ship. It's a little play on relationship. Um, I offer one-on-one services. Uh, I have a newsletter you can join. I share tips, special offers, advice that I don't share anywhere else. And I currently also have a group coaching program designed to help you break your patterns. Um, Also great to get some support from like-minded women who have the same goals as you. So I have that enrollment is open right now and it's all in the link in my bio on my Instagram. Okay, cool. Thank you. And I'll make sure to link your Instagram in the description for anyone who wants to go check that out. Give Rachel a follow. Um, she posts awesome content and it's also entertaining. So like, what more do you want? Like education and entertaining for try, your group program. So when does it, yeah. Um, normalize the conversation. Uh, when does your group program start and is it only for women? Um, it's not only for women. Um, I just generally work with women, but I wouldn't say it's only for women. Um, but, uh, we're aiming to start the first week of October. So enrollment is open now. There's limited spaces. It's going to be a small intimate group so that it's comfortable. Um, yeah, we're going to be deep diving into all the different areas of relationships and learning a lot, um, different, like it's going to be a worksheet every week, um, different tools and techniques for really diving deep and getting to know yourself and break these patterns and improve those relationships. I love it. Okay, yeah. cool. And yeah, like I said, I'll make sure that you are in the description so people can just tap on and learn more at the link in your bio. Um, awesome. Thank, thank you. you for being here as always. It's been a Thanks pleasure. For having me. And for anyone who enjoyed this episode, we also did a foundational relationships conversation uh previously so make sure to go ahead and check that out as well if you have not already uh where we talk about things that apply to in your relationship not just specifically relationship with yourself so that's also what we have going on for you if you enjoyed this one um what i have going on for you is i actually am going to be doing a free live training september 26th it's going to be five days um there's a company workbook and so What I'm going to be teaching in there are five reasons why self-help isn't helping and what to do instead. And so each day we're going to look at a different one of those five reasons and it's going to be within a group. And then also you will have me for support as well. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, it's a updated version or an updated version, excuse me, of the previous workbook that I was offering people and this time I'm actually going to be doing the training live and so anyone who's interested in that link in my bio that's where all the good stuff is um it is the first one so yeah you can go ahead and sign up for that there like I said it is free and if you have any questions you can also ask me that uh otherwise episode 68 comes out on Monday at 8 a.m uh therapeutic coach Shannon Dyerly is going to be joining me and we are having a conversation continuing on self-discovery um but we're going to be continuing our boundaries series and so we're going to be talking about creating and upholding boundaries with yourself it's a juicy topic and it's one where we start off defining it because even as we're going into it i'm like okay so we need to be really clear about what we mean with this and so yeah that's going to be available youtube anywhere you like to listen to podcasts at 8 a.m eastern on monday so sounds good that's it that's a wrap we did really great. Um, we got two minutes to go to the hour. So very proud of us. High five. Cats on yes, the back. Great job. Um, if anyone has questions, like I said, go ahead and comment them. Otherwise, make sure to follow Rachel. Her info will be in the description. And if you have any questions, we're here. Thank Otherwise, you so much. This thank so you fun. so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye.